It's week 18 of the NFL on CBS. We welcome you to Philadelphia. Two playoff teams going head-to-head -head today. The Giants and the Eagles to wrap up the regular season. Philly can clinch the number one seed in the NFC with a win. The Giants are locked in as the sixth seed. The postseason is one week away. Ian Eagle, Charles Davis, Evan Washburn, the rest of our NFL on CBS crew, the return of Jalen Hurts. Huge day for Philly on a number of levels, including getting their Pro Bowl quarterback back in the mix. Yeah, and listen, they went 0-2 without him. Things are much better when he's in the at the controls and so much to play for today. You want everyone ready to go. Philadelphia won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Elliott will kick it off to Brightwell. We're underway in the city of brotherly love. The number one seed is on the line in the NFC for Philadelphia. Returnable. Brightwell up the middle, and he's tackled just as he hit the 25-yard line. So the big surprise and the reveal was at quarterback. No Daniel Jones. No Tyrod Taylor. Davis Webb. Sixth-year NFL veteran makes his first professional start. He has never thrown a pass in a regular season game. And I think you're so right about the reveal because we kind of thought Daniel Jones might not go, but I don't think we thought that Davis Webb would start instead of Tyrod Taylor. Giants trying to keep everyone healthy for their first playoff game next week. Saquon Barkley is inactive, so Matt Breida gets the start. It's a running play on first down. Breida takes it up the gut to the 30-yard line for a gain of four. Kaiser White with the tackle for Philadelphia. The Giants going to the playoffs for the first time since 2016, but Brian Dable making the decision to rest key starters here in week 18. Philadelphia needs this game to shore up the number one seed in the conference. Working out of the gun, handoff to Brito once again, tries to angle it inside, and he gains three on the play. It's Philadelphia defense. We know they can get after the quarterback. That has stood out from day one for Nick Sirianni. They have a chance to actually set the all-time sacks record with a big performance here today. All-time record held by the Chicago Bears. And they are excited about those prospects. Talk to Fletcher Cox, their all-star defensive tackle in pregame, going through his stretches. Said so he's trying to get ready, trying to get loose. They certainly hope to chase that sack record down today. They have 68 sacks. The record is 72, set back in 84. Webb rolling, throwing into the ground. He bounced it in the direction of Lawrence Cager. Pressure coming from Hassan Reddick, who has had a big time season for Philadelphia, second in the NFL in sacks with 16. Yeah, he is special because three straight years now. He has gone double-digit sacks. Watch number seven in black. Doesn't allow Davis Webb to get outside to the perimeter. Hassan Reddick make him, makes him throw it away. Jamie Gillen will punt it away for the Giants. The deep man is Covey. Not much of a rush. Sailing kick. Covey handles at the 21. Covey thrown down just short of the 35 yard line that was a hard tackle after the 47 yard kick 14 yard return nfl today update let's send it to new york san francisco can't clinch the top seed with the win and an eagles loss but i am to last game of the year you can't hold anything back david blown the flea flicker to aj green 77 yards they missed the extra point arizona up six nothing and i am you know that was said with a high degree of reverence for you Where's Adam Sandler? Where's Henry Winkler? San Francisco still with a chance at the number one seed. Philadelphia, though, they've got destiny in their own hands here, and they've got their quarterback in the lineup, Jalen Hurts. Last two weeks not being able to play because of that shoulder injury. He's had a lot of emotions. And he hits A.J. Brown. Big gain on first down. Brown has just set the Philadelphia Eagles single season receiving record with that grab for 35 yards. And how appropriate it was on this type of a route and turned into an explosive play. Plays that are gaining 16 to 20 yards or more. This is what they define as an explosive pass play in Philadelphia, and he does exactly that. 
Hurts drifting. He throws it out of bounds. So A.J. Brown tops the previous mark held by Mike Quick, who is here in the stadium. He works the analyst role on the radio side, along with the legendary Merrill Reese. So for Mike Quick, he held that record for so long, and to see it unfold in person. I wonder what he was thinking as the play unfolded. Not so much the record, but that route looked awfully familiar. <laughs> Mike Quick made a living on those slant routes and gained a lot of yardage on those. A.J. Brown emulated him on that one. And, C.D., we do have to at least put the caveat in there. It's 17 yes. games. Oh, Mike, Mike will, will probably slightly <laughs> pop that in at some point. The catch by Quez Watkins, and he works that sideline for a first down. Philadelphia not wasting any time. We have seen the electricity that the Eagles can bring offensively through the air. I watched this team practice on Friday, and they had that bounce to their step. They were not going into this game tight. I talked to some Giants personnel. They were wondering if Philadelphia might be a little tight in the beginning because of what was on the line. It does not appear that way from what we're seeing so far. Floater. Catch made. Working the flat area, and it's Dallas Goddard. We know the chemistry between Hertz and Goddard. And for them, they haven't been together for a long time because Hertz was injured the last couple of weeks dealing with his shoulder injury. And prior to that, Goddard had missed extended time with his shoulder injury. Yeah, they don't mind getting back together and finding a way. And Goddard, what does he take pride in? Being a three-down tight end. He talked to us about that extensively. Wants to be on the field at all times. Whether it's running plays, passing plays, he wants to be a factor. Second down and eight. Hurts. Lost it. Incomplete. And he was looking for Goddard. Some contact in the end zone with Dane Belton stepping in for Julian Love, who is not active here today. And no flag on the play. I think the official determined that Dallas Goddard fell on his own. You see hands on him a little bit, but you see Goddard going to the ground as well as Belton. The officials decided that wasn't really the, the result of, of, of Belton having his hands or pushing him. Goddard went to the ground. Belton followed him. Incomplete pass. Eagles moving quickly down the field. This is the sixth play of the drive. Trying to cash in on a third and eight. Gainwell in there. Hurts. Buys time. And that one is out of bounds. Didn't have anything working. Ryder Anderson put some heat on Jalen Hurts. And it's fourth down. Field goal unit will come on for Philly. And how about Wink Martindale? Don Martindale, the defense coordinator for the Giants. Normally a lot of pressure packages getting after the quarterback. Just rushed four on that play and played coverage. And it worked quite well. No one opened in the secondary for Jalen Hurts to find. And as you described, Ryder Anderson put the pressure on and made him throw it away. Jake Elliott on for a 32-yard field goal trying to get the scoring started here for the Eagles. It's good. Philadelphia in front. Three to nothing. A.J. Brown, another big play on a catch and run. Basically, when he gets the football in his hands, he's a running back, and he can do whatever he pleases in the open field. Ian Eagle, Charles Davis, some other guy here as well. <laughs> That's not Evan Washburn. He's down on the field. Charles, Brian Dable's decision not to play his starters. There were questions throughout yep. the week as to what he would do. You get the sense he decided fairly early. Yeah, he certainly did. And remember, he's not Tom Coughlin. Different situation. Everybody expected him to play the starters that Coach Coughlin did. Different place, different time. He thought that was best for his team. Well, this has been uplifting throughout the day around NFL stadiums. Prior to kickoff in each game, a celebration. And everybody thinking of DeMar Hamlin and the encouraging signs that we've seen throughout the week, what took place on Monday and where we are today, different ends of the spectrum. Just incredible to see the groundswell of support around the league and around the country. Webb, first completion in a sixth year NFL career. He hooks up with Matt Breida for a yard on a quick hitter. And he's a guy that came out of college with the reputation of being someone who could pitch it around. Played at Texas Tech, played at Cal. In his college career, threw for nearly 10,000 yards total, 83 touchdowns, completion percentage of 62. So when he came out of school, he was drafted by the Giants. A third round pick in 2017, hasn't gotten much of an opportunity, but he does have talent. Webb goes through his progressions, fires it, incomplete. 
He was trying to hum it in there to Marcus Johnson. Thank you. Go to New York, NFL Today update. San Francisco, a lot to play for. Yeah, how about this Brock Purdy? His story continues to manifest itself. Here you can find Christian McCaffrey on the screen pass. 21 yards in San Francisco. Back on top, 7-6 to six over Arizona. Back to Ian Eagle. Just the Brock Purdy story yeah, is off the charts. Amazing. And, and the thing about it, I went back and checked my notes, talked to a few other people. Did we totally miss on that? He consensus was going to go where he went in the draft. He's just outperformed it. Rushes on. Webb trying to spin out of it. Throws. Just off the hand of Johnson. Incomplete. Reddick had a beat on Webb and give him credit for just getting rid of it and nearly completes it downfield. Now, if that wasn't a night, a day at the improv for Davis Webb, I don't know what was. We're catching right there the end of the full twirl before he throws it and Marcus Johnson like, are you kidding me? Is coming towards me? If that's on target, look at this. The full spinorama before he goes down. If Marcus Johnson catches that one, he's got room to roam. Low snap. Gillen up in the air. Covey lets it roll and then just gets out of the way. Not going to take any chances. The ball will settle in at the 19-yard line of Philadelphia. That's where the Eagles will have it after the 55-yard kick. They've got a 3-0 lead on the Giants in the first. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Royal Caribbean. This is all the vacations. Come seek. All states reminding you that football is mayhem. And by Visa. Anyone can change the game with the power of Visa. Three nothing lead for the Eagles. They'll clinch the one seed with a win or Dallas and San Francisco loss. That will mean a first round bye for Philadelphia. A team that started the season eight and zero before losing to Washington, then suffered losses to Dallas and New Orleans when Hertz was out. Swing pass caught by Devontae Smith. He's so dangerous as well, having a big season. He's hit by Dane Belton after the nine yard grab. Downstairs to Evan. Well, and you touched on it. The support for the recovery of Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin, continues into the late afternoon hour. And both these teams have strong connections to Hamlin, but maybe none bigger than Eagles running back Miles Sanders, who's got Pittsburgh roots and grew up and is a best friend of DeMar Hamlin. And this was awesome. Warm-ups, a FaceTime with Hamlin from his hospital room. It was a tough week for Sanders early, but his mood, as all of us, has shifted as things have gotten better for DeMar. And Evan, that that might be the perfect picture of the day. Absolutely. And think about how Miles Sanders is feeling, knowing his friend's on the road to recovery, and he has a chance to celebrate him with his play today. Third down and two. Eagles trying to convert. Hurts hits his man for a first down. It's Goddard. Six-yard grab. Goddard, when we asked him about sitting out for that extended period of time, he said, well, look, it was a shoulder issue, so I could still work on my lower body. That at least kept me sitting. Yeah, absolutely. It also meant he could run, keep his wind. So conditioning coming back wasn't quite as bad for him. All those things that go into it. The best athletes always find that silver lining when they're on the road to recovery, trying to come back from injury. Dallas Goddard certainly found his. He missed five games with that shoulder issue. New set of downs for Philadelphia. Sanders gets the call. And he's thrown down just across the 35 by O'Shane Zimenez. So, you know, obviously, offensive players, when your quarterback isn't playing and your backup quarterback isn't playing, that's going to be the headline for the Giants. They've got a bunch of defensive second-teamers, third-teamers in there today as well. And both sides talked about Wink Martindale, defensive coordinator. What a cool opportunity for guys to get on tape and show they belong in this league. Offense coordinator Shane Steichen for the Eagles. We know how hard those guys are going to play. They've got something to prove. We had better be ready ourselves. Nine passes so far, just one throw. That's the 10th pass of the afternoon. And it's Quez Watkins with a grab for no game. So it's going to be third down and long for Philadelphia. And one thing to keep an eye on today, one of the best parts of Jalen Hurts' game is how his legs and running ability are an accessory to the Eagles' run and pass game. And he's a big part of it. I think they're not going to want to run him at all today. They're going to do everything possible to protect him. Coming back from the shoulder injury, getting ready for the playoffs. 
I don't think the Giants are going to rush him and try and hem him in. They're going to feel like he's not going to want to move and run. They're just going to try and go after him. Nickel package here for the Giants. Hurts hooks a pass downfield. Coming back for it. A.J. Brown. The timing worked. A rainbow to Brown working against Rodarius Williams, the second-year corner. And they did go after him in the pocket, feeling like he was going to sit back there and not move. And he felt, stayed in there in the teeth of the rush and arced that rainbow downfield. And as you described, A.J. Brown found the ball. Rodarius Williams didn't. 37-yard catch. Stiff arm from Goddard. We asked him about the first name, Dallas. He said, well... You guessed it. My dad was a huge Cowboys fan, so you could figure out where that decision came from. But then when he got drafted here, the Philly fans said, what about changing it to Philly? And he said, you know, I've kind of grown used to Dallas. Yeah. I'll be an eagle, though. Don't worry about that part of it. And he was a Cowboy fan early in his life, and then he rebelled at some point. He's like, nah, I'm not about this. Going the other way. He ended up becoming a Packers fan. Second down and five. Pistol formation. It's a running play. Sanders. Nice move. Sanders has had a Pro Bowl season. He's got a first down for Philadelphia. Six-yard run hit by Jason Pinnock on the play. And this ought to be familiar because watch this offensive line get their movement now. This ought to be familiar from the first time they played. Look at Sayamalo, 56 pulling. Look at Stoll, 89 leading up in the hole. The first time they played, they chewed him up in the running game. But it started the exact same way as today. They threw the ball extensively to begin and then ran it later. It's a running play to Sanders, finds the hole, cuts to the outside, and a hit right around the ankles by Pinnock, who was a college teammate of DeMar Hamlin's at Pitt. And if Pinnock doesn't make that, if he doesn't sweep the leg there, it becomes interesting getting to the pylon. Charles, our broadcast location in Philly is higher than <laughs> some of the other stadiums, but I can guarantee you I can pick out A.J. Brown at any, moment at any moment of the game. And what a perfect backdrop for the game. I think you can tell why. <laughs> Look at the shoes. It's got to be the shoes, Ian. Second down and five. Nice hesitation by Sanders, and the spin move gets him very close to first down yardage. You know who's jealous about A.J. Brown's shoes? Who's that? All the guys wearing the security jackets around here, all the security oh, personnel. It matches. Take a look at the shoes. And then when you see the security personnel at the base of the stadium, yeah. they're like, you know, that would really set off the outfit. Charles, you got to coordinate. <laughs> you got to coordinate. And A.J. Brown to help him with it later. And they're coordinating with a bunch formation at the top. Let's see if they want to go one-on-one -on -one with Devontae Smith on the backside. First and goal, Sanders. Ooh, the elasticity right there as they grab Sanders. And look at that. He lost a piece of the equipment in the back. I wonder if that's the T-shirt, too, the love for DeMar T-shirt that he had. Remember when he came out of the tunnel and had, it, had, had his shirt lifted up to show it underneath as they got a piece of that one? Nice play there by number 49, Tamon Fox, who has really impressed his Giants personnel since he got to camp. Undrafted free agent out of North Carolina. They were stunned he didn't get picked. He had three sacks against NC State last year playing for North Carolina against all-star tackle Ike Aquano, the first-round pick for the Carolina Panthers. 12th play of the drive. Eagles are threatening here. Boston Scott in. The blast. Scott won't go down. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Scott takes it in to add to the Eagles lead here in the first. And do you know they call number 35 Boston Scott in Philadelphia the Giant Killer? Why? That's the 10th touchdown he scored against the Giants in his career. All right, 10 of his 17 career touchdowns have come against the Giants. When he plays the Giants, he averages 51 yards on the ground and a touchdown each time out. Extra point here from Jake Elliott. And it gives Philadelphia a 10-0 advantage. 12 plays, 80 yards, six runs, six passes. Pay dirt for Scott. Back at Lincoln Financial Field, lights are on. It's going to be pure darkness in just a little bit. Only 4.50 here on the East Coast, but... We know how much this game means to Philadelphia. Boston Scott just keeps piling up the touchdowns against the division rival. 
Eagles want to set the tone here early. And their hope is that there's nothing to worry about come third quarter into fourth quarter. Why is that? Well, Philadelphia has had two chances to clinch that number one seed, but they suffered two losses. Gardner Minshew was stepping in for Jalen Hurts. So that opened the door for Minnesota and San Francisco to have a chance. Uh, Minnesota is done. Dallas, they are staring at that wild card unless some things were to happen here between Philadelphia and San Francisco. Hand up, blown up. No running room for Brightwell as Milton Williams was all over him. Meanwhile, the Giants are thinking about, all right, who's going to be the matchup next week? Minnesota appears to be the one that is most likely yes. to play the Giants, and they just played them recently, and it was a very competitive game. Almost, remember the Patriots-Giants to end the season in Patriots-Giants Super Bowl? The Giants walked away from Minnesota feeling they could play with those Vikings. They're not, they're not afraid of them at all. No doubt. Went with the throw. Nick Bennett, who has picked up middle of the season here. He's played with Seattle, Pittsburgh, Denver, and New Orleans, a tight end. Four and a half yard gain on the play. It's third down. I think this defensive line of the Eagles in their little separate meetings in their own room this week talked vehemently about slowing down the run, shutting down the run so we can chase that sack record. Because this Giants team is going to be careful with what they do with Davis Webb. And you notice how they're being very conservative running the ball and short passes. In order to get to Davis Webb, everything has to be third and long, second and long, in order to get turned loose. Third down and six. Webb gets rid of it, and he's got a first down on that throw to Cager. Lawrence Cager is a former wide receiver. He got converted to tight end with the Jets, cup of coffee with Cleveland, back with the Jets, and now with the Giants. And a nice job by Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator, understanding this pass rush of the Eagles. Everyone gets it. So the ball better be out of your quarterback's hands quickly. And Lawrence Cager, as you described, the former receiver, able to get open and pick up first down yardage. Offensive coordinator Mike Kafka has done a terrific job working with Brian Babel. <laughs> Hand off right well. There's nothing there. And when we talked to Davis Webb, I mean, he acknowledged it. He said, I'm like a little kid again. <laughs> the idea that... I'm going to start in the NFL, the circuitous route to get to this place in his sixth year and get this opportunity said, it's just, it's a cool opportunity for me. And I think Mike Garofolo at NFL Network moved the story that the Dolphins were interested in signing Davis Webb this week, and he turned down that opportunity, probably understanding he would get that chance to play here. The Dolphins ended up signing Mike Glennon to play today instead. And Miami gets to the playoffs. Second and nine. Webb, he knows this offense backwards and forwards because he's got the experience in Buffalo under Dable, and there was a late hit. T.J. Edwards came over as Webb was veering out of bounds, and the Giants took exception to it. So you're looking at an eight-yard run. If they get the 15 yards with this yeah, he's in Conte. the white. Yeah, he's in the white. And once you get into the white, they protect quarterback all the times anyway. Number 57, defense, 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. So that's a 23-yard play combining the run from Webb, the penalty on Edwards, Carl Sheffers, 15th year's referee in the NFL. So the Giants are now set up at the Philadelphia 31, trailing 10-0. And T.J. Edwards, I think his his gripe would be, I tried to pull off, and he did. You could see it clearly there. But he's in the white, made the contact, the flag came down. T.J. Edwards is saying, I could have really blown him up if I wanted to. We're down to 120 to go in this opening quarter. Webb from the gun. He will fire to the outside. Caught by Brightwell, tries to move upfield, and he's tackled after the gain of three couldn't break away along the perimeter. So a lot of Brightwell expecting some more Brita. They're going to mix and match and give some guys that have not had a whole lot of opportunities a chance to do some work here today in week 18. There's one right there. We saw him in the Hubble. He wears number 19 and Kenny Galladay, a high-priced free agent who only has four catches for the year. Second and seven. 
Brentwell tried to spin out of it. It's a loss on the play. He's dropped at the 30-yard line by Sidney J. Gardner-Johnson. How about him getting back in there after missing six straight games with a lacerated kidney? He was having a huge season with six interceptions. Yeah, he and Robert Quinn both activated this week. Remember, they ended up losing their defensive end, Josh Sweat, for this game. Quinn brought up to play defensive end. Gardner Johnson, not only is he going to play safety, he may play some nickel, which is what he did a lot in New Orleans. Third down and eight. Final seconds of the opening quarter. Webb knocked away. He was looking for Galladay. And it was snuffed out by Bradbury, a former giant. And this is the type of day where it's a test of who you are as a professional when the normal guys are not running out there opposite you. Some guys start to relax a little bit. They kind of take the day off. But when you understand you're playing NFL players, even if they're backups, James Bradbury got the memo. He was ready to go on that one and knocked it away from Galladay. And this is going to be a 47-yard attempt for the 14-year veteran Graham Gano, who's had an excellent season. Trying to get the Giants on the board. It's a fake. Gillen in trouble. And the Scottish hammer gets nailed. Zach McPherson, first man there for Philly. And we saw him in the season opener 2020 on a fake trying to run the football, get blown up. He has not had much success being that guy in gadget plays. How do you order? You, you with Wiz, without Wiz? Do you I mean, load it up? What do you do? Yeah, I mean, if I'm in Philly, I order Wiz. Outside of Philly, no Wiz. There you go. Sanders bursts through and is spun down after the four-yard game by Jason Pinnock. So take a look here. There's Christian Ellis. And then watch from here to here because that's Milton Williams is going to come out and cut off Jamie Gillen. So Ellis takes the tight end, covers him. No place to go. Milton Williams comes out, cuts off Gillen's path, forces him back inside. And does that go as the first sack of the game? It does. We just got word. Official score has ruled it a sack. So they are one sack closer to the all-time mark of 72 set by the 1984 Bears. They're now at 69. Give it to Sanders. Tries to take it to the outside. He's ridden down across the 45-yard line by Ziminis for a gain of three and a half. Just underway here in the second quarter, Ian Eagle, Charles Davis, Evan Washburn, the rest of our NFL on CBS crew, producer Mark Wolf, director Suzanne Smith. Week 18 of the regular season, Brian Dayball and company, they know where they're going to be in terms of seeding. Number six, they just don't know where they're going to go yet. Minnesota or San Francisco, correct? That's it. Who's going to be the three seed? Third and two. From the gun, Hurts. Tried to grab it with his hands. A.J. Brown couldn't bring it down. And Flott was there defensively for New York. Good job of coverage by Cordell Flott. Number 28. He's a guy that's kind of a combo outside corner. Work inside at the nickel. Does a nice job pressing up on A.J. Brown. And right now Philadelphia kept the offense on the field. Now they're going to make the change. And there was a moment where it looked like they were going for it on fourth and two. And that was, I think this is a smart play by Nick Sirianni. He has the better team today. Giants resting some key guys. They're off to a nice start. Don't make plays that allow the Giants to get back in. Punt the ball deep, play with the defense, and go from there. So it's the veteran, Brett Kern. Handled at the 14-yard line by Richie James. 37-yard kick. The Giants will get the football back. They trail Philadelphia early second quarter. 10-0. Inside the NFL, the show the pros watch Tuesday, streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. Philadelphia, 10 0 lead on the Giants, 13 33 mark of the second quarter. Davis Webb back out there for New York, working out of the gun. Webb pump and throw. It is on time as he hits Lawrence Cager for three yards on the play. So just going through. The career timeline of Webb. Texas Tech, he was there, had some success. Very much so. And then what happened? And then, then, then uh, a guy named Patrick Mahomes showed up. Ah. He was there with Baker Mayfield. Mayfield gets hurt, transfers out, he goes from there, and he ends up transferring to Cal after Mahomes arrived. Played for Sonny Dykes, put up good numbers. Third round pick of the Giants gets cut 
when a new regime came in. The Jets pick him up, practice squad, goes to Buffalo, teams up with Brian Dable, and then some interesting things, possibilities for Webb. He's going to run for it on the outside, and Webb loses the ball, but it was down. Davis Webb was considering a coaching future. The Buffalo Bills were legitimately interested in Webb being their quarterback's coach Correct. this season. And he wanted to still play. And he had such a relationship with Brian Dable from his time in Buffalo. And Joe Shane, the new GM, who's the assistant GM in Buffalo, continuing his education in coaching, but still with an opportunity to get on the field, led him here to New York. This is a third and five. Webb's been on the practice squad for the majority of the season for New York. Pocket collapsing, Webb. That floater is incomplete. Once again, Cager, the intended target, coverage from Reed Blankenship for Philadelphia. And I am extremely impressed in the early going with how disciplined this Philadelphia defense has been. Remember the fourth down play with the fake field goal? They were all over that. Anything they're running short, quarterback keeper, they're out on the play. Reed Blankenship makes the play. All over them right now, Jonathan Gannon, the defensive coordinator, has his guys focused and locked in, not just chasing the sack record, but making sure they don't give up easy plays. That one was close to being blocked. Flag is down. Covey cuts it to the outside, gets to the edge, and he's out of bounds. Angles just across midfield to the 48-yard line. 45-yard kick, 16-yard return. Here is Cheffers to fill us in. Holding. Number 21 of the kicking team, that 10-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down, Philadelphia, timeout. So Landon Collins called him the hold. Give Philly 10 more yards when we come back. Saquon Barkley, we spoke with him yesterday. He said, look, in camp, we believed we had a chance to be a legit team. Halftime of the Tennessee game, the season opener, it felt like we really had something in this locker room. Hurts out of the pocket, dictating downfield, and he's just going to take it out of bounds. Not taking any chances. Giants had good coverage. Jared Davis over there defensively. And with Jalen Hurts, not going to see much running from him today. But how about going quarterback in 101? You have to win from the pocket. Free hitter in his face. He stands in there coolly, makes a throw. Sends his Nick McLeod, the free hitter from the backside. The cornerback lets it go down. Field lets A.J. Brown make a play. No panic, unruffled in the pocket. And even though today we won't see the quarterback run game, I don't believe, we'll still see Jalen Hurts going through his progressions. Second down and nine. Boston Scott in there. Already had the touchdown. Hurts sets and throws. And gets it to his receiver, Devontae Smith. When we asked Hertz about getting back for this one, he told us, I didn't start throwing until last Thursday. And it's such a feel thing because he had never missed two games in a row in his life. So guys would watch him throw and they would say, hey, you look good. And then he would think to himself, I don't feel good. Yeah, because they know they can just feel it. They can sense it. You hear all the time about athletes who can detect something in a ball or in a feel or whatever that others just can't. And they're usually right with their thoughts. Third down and five for Philly. Shotgun. Hertz has to get rid of it. And it's incomplete. He was looking for Quez Watkins, but the timing was thrown off because of the rush of Tamon Fox. He mentioned Tamon Fox, the rookie out of North Carolina. He's getting involved in the run game. Look at him coming off the edge, number 49 in white, going right at the quarterback. Makes him get rid of it, probably a count early. And the ball falls incomplete, bringing out Elliott for another opportunity. So this will be a 52-yard attempt for Jake Elliott. Long this year is 56, career long 61. So he's got plenty of leg. He drives this one. And right down Broad Street. 13-0. Philadelphia's got the lead. More second quarter action when we come back. Back here in Philadelphia, the Eagles 13, Giants nothing. Philadelphia wins. They are the one seed. No questions asked. Doesn't matter what any other team does. Meanwhile, Dallas having a tough time right now with Washington. And San Francisco has got 
the first half lead as the 49ers are still looking for the one seed. Saturday, more college basketball coming your way on CBS. Fantastic Big Ten matchup. 14th ranked Wisconsin, 15th ranked Indiana. It all begins at 12.30 with our inside college basketball crew. That's Saturday on CBS. Love those IU warm-up sweats with the stripes. Kind of like the barber's pole stripe. Love them. Well, Mike Woodson wore those yep, in his right. playing days. Made sure they had them for his time now. Done outstanding work so far. San Francisco with a 14-6 lead over Arizona. Shotgun here for Webb. Popped up in the air. Incomplete. He was trying to hit Galladay, but Darius Slay, the five-time Pro Bowler, was there. NFL Today update. Back to New York. Washington trying to adversely affect the Cowboys' seeding. Yeah, and for Dak Prescott, he's going to try to throw the out right here, but Kendall Fuller is going to step right in front to take this thing on a pick six from 28 yards out. They missed the extra point. The Washington Commanders 13, Dallas Cowboys 0. Ian Eagle, Charles Davis, and Evan Washburn. JB, Coach, you just don't really know what you're going to get week in and week out from the Dallas Cowboys. Webb, once again, using that spin move to his advantage. And throws it incomplete. The net, the intended target, Robert Quinn, you mentioned it, Charles. He is back from a knee issue. Put some pressure on Davis Webb. And he's looking for his first sack as a Philadelphia Eagle. Just won this year. And remember, in 2021, he was an all-pro. Had a monster season in Chicago. But now look at him there, and you just described that spin move. Webb getting out of trouble. And what a dilemma for Mike Kafka, the play caller. And for Davis Webb, how do you move the ball against this Eagles team? The short passing game, they're all over it right now. If you go back to throw it deep, here comes the pass rush. And a jump from Brandon Graham. Yeah, he's, he, he's trying to get that get off and get there. Number 55, defense. Five-yard penalty, third down. You hear how defensive linemen always talk about you earn the right to rush the passer by throwing, uh, throttling them on first and second down in the run game. Get him in third and long. Now you can get that sprinter stance and go. That was Brandon Graham's opportunity, and he jumped too quickly. Davis Webb told us that he's been keeping notes since the age of 10. Football notes, filling up notebooks, now using an iPad. His dad, a veteran coach, so it's in his blood. Webb, it's complete right at the line to gain. They're going to give him enough. Kenny Galladay, who's been a major disappointment for the Giants, but seeing a lot of action here because of the decisions made by Brian Dable personnel-wise. Galladay moves the chains with the grab. Essentially, the last time we saw Kenny Galladay, we did their game against Houston, and he had two drops in the first half and went to the bench. And I'm not sure how much he's played since then. We haven't seen the Giants, but his numbers for the season coming into the game, four catches for 51 yards. Not a lot of action, almost no production. Webb, play fake, throws. A little bit offline, but nice adjustment by Cager to haul it in. That's a gain of 11. We check in with Evan. Well, guys, you mentioned Davis Webb. This has been a long journey also for his family who are in attendance. Matt and Donna, the left side of your screen there. Also his girlfriend, Donette Hickson, and spoke to mom, Donna. She was telling me this is pinch me moment and CD you'll appreciate this Matt the football coach no interest in talking to the reporter before the game. <laughs> Catch and run by Lawrence Cager. I want to point out they like each other. There was a person sitting in between yeah. them earlier. They did yeah. not <laughs> you were separate. Someone is using the restroom or took a phone call. So, so in other words, you were answering the question America was asking. <laughs> no. Is there a rift between the no. web parent no, no, and no. girlfriend? No. No rift. No, I want to I want to put an end to that <laughs> speculation right now. I love what Evan said about Coach Coach Webb. No, we don't we don't talk to the to the media before a game. We'll yeah. talk to you afterwards. The head coach at, uh, where is he, at Centennial High School in Texas? Yes. Evan was looking for like a 60 minutes back and forth. <laughs> no. Second down and four. Play fake. Stepping in. Marcus Epps. Did he get it clean? And by his reaction, he did not. Incomplete. Tried to hide it a little bit with those green gloves on the green grass, right? Tried to, tried to make it work for him. And there's Epps just breaks on it perfectly oh. cuts right in front of Galladay could not have had a better opportunity that's on him not hauling that one in originally went to the University of Minnesota transferred to Wyoming was a three-time captain at the University of Wyoming 
and doing a nice job here in Philadelphia. Sixth round pick in 2019 was with Minnesota, got waived. Philly picked him up. He's been here ever since. On a give to Brightwell, he carries the pile with him to the 40-yard line. Gary Brightwell's in his second year in the NFL, a sixth round draft pick. Nice cutting ability, and when we talked to Saquon Barkley, he said, man, I'm going to be cheering on Brightwell and Breida. I'm going to be like an assistant coach out there. They've had my back all season. And he's giving them nice inspiration. That's a good job there by number 77. Jack Anderson started on a double team and then climbed to the second level to get a second block to help Brightwell pick up the first down. Block continues to roll. 7.35 remaining in this first half. Eighth play of the drive for the Giants. They trail 13-0. Jump on the right side. Evan Neal knows it. Number 73, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. First-round pick out of the University of Alabama has had an up-and-down, inconsistent rookie year. And in a game like this, resting starters, ordinarily he'd be a guy that'd be a candidate to go to the bench and take some time off, but he missed a lot of time during the season with injuries. They need him to get as much experience, as much play as possible heading into the playoffs. Brian Dable told us the twists and turns of the season helped him learn about these guys how they handle success how they handle adversity fake Webb look out Webb just has to toss it away as he's about to get crushed by Reddick and a flag down that'll be grounding on Webb I'm pretty sure ball never got back to the line of scrimmage yeah that's exactly what Carl Cheffers is pointing out and they were trying for the big Pitching shot here. Grounding. Number 12, offense. That will be a spot foul. Loss of down. Second down. And Hassan Reddick's happy about the penalty, but you know what he's saying to himself? Hey, Davis, hold it just a half count longer. Yeah. That'd be the second sack of the game from my team here. But they were going for the big shot. That was a fake one way, trying to throw the deep ball back to the other side. And it got double teamed by Philadelphia in the secondary. And Davis Webb had to go and try to make something happen to no avail. Reddick is back home. Told us that was the biggest factor. Signing with Philadelphia. Obviously, the contract, the money was very good. But coming back to be with family. Grew up an Eagle fan. I I'm not sure the season could have gone any better for Reddick. On a game, Brightwell somehow stays upright. And gets stacked up just across the 40-yard line after the gain of two by Milton Williams. But he did a lot just to get two yards on that one because Kaiser White coming on a run blitz was there and affected the play early. Couldn't get Brightwell down. Brightwell got two yards out of out of what have should have out of what should have been a loss of yardage. So it's gonna be third and 29 here for the Giants. Webb is 8 of 17, 51 yards. Dime package here for Philly. Look how deep they are. They are way back there guarding the sticks. Webb gets rid of it. Incomplete. Trying to hit Brita. And it's fourth down. And he's trying. Davis Webb is certainly trying, but it's a mixed match offensive line. It's not top line wide receivers. And when you couple that with going against one of the top defenses in the game, especially with their pass rush, you're asking a lot. They can't move the ball on the ground. The short passing game is being being taken care of. And that means you have almost no chance of throwing that ball deep. Jamie Gillen to kick it. With the locks flowing. Covey gets under it and catches it along the sideline. 39-yard kick. Last Sunday, Art McNally passed away at the age of 97. Mr. McNally served as an NFL official for nine seasons before becoming the league's director of officiating in 1968. He remained an active member of the NFL family until he retired in 2015 and is considered a key figure in implementing the use of instant replay. Mr. McNally was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame last summer. First meeting between these two teams, week 14, Philadelphia rolled over the Giants 48 to 22. Last week, offense had a tough time getting going. Four straight three and outs to start the game in that loss to New Orleans. Season low in points, 20 to 10 loss. Sanders hit hard. 
as he picks up three yards on the play. Micah McFadden with the stick. This Dallas defense, they don't have everyone playing, but they are battling hard because Philadelphia's moved the ball pretty well, but they forced them into field goals, not giving up the touchdowns. Wink Martindale's defense giving him full effort and some pretty good execution at times as well, keeping Philadelphia out of the end zone on every drive. Five and a half to play in the second quarter, second down and seven for the Eagles. Hertz is 9 of 14, 112 yards. Sanders 27 yards on the ground. Hertz out of the pocket. Chase from behind. Hertz has that extra gear. Out of bounds. It's a first down run for Jalen Hertz. Eight yards. NFL Today update. Back to New York. San Francisco wants a win and a Philly lost, but... Yeah, Arizona said we ain't going anywhere. Corey Clement will go one yard out. He's going to uh, get the score there. The extra point was good. San Francisco 14 and Arizona 13. Meanwhile, back to Ian Eagle. All right, guys. New set of downs here for the Eagles. San Francisco would clinch the one seed with a win and a Philadelphia loss. Fake it. And a strong throw handled by Goddard. Seven-yard pickup through the air. So Dallas Goddard has been heavily involved. Talk to him about South Dakota State FCS championship game. They were up 31-14 last. I looked today against North Dakota State, their arch rival. He brightened up a little bit talking about his Jackrabbits. He said it. It's our time. So he felt confident about the game and the matchup. Obviously, that rivalry through the years when he was there. He went through chapter and verse. The years they beat him, the years he got beat. But they, but they couldn't win the big title because North Dakota State was just piling them up like crazy. On a third and three, Boston Scott. It is just enough for a first down. So the clock will hit four minutes left in this second quarter. Nick Sirianni is one of the candidates for Coach of the Year in the NFL. Brian Dable also belongs in that conversation. Absolutely. What these two guys have done, three teams in the NFC East going to the playoffs. Yeah, what, a, what an extraordinary year, and it wasn't that long ago we were talking about the NFC lease. Yes, everybody put the L. Right, in everybody front. thought they were clever and thought it was funny. Now one of the better divisions in the game. Who's laughing? I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm not defensive, you're defensive. <laughs> Boston Scott with a run to the 50-yard line, downstairs to Evan. Hey, guys, you know what struck me talking to both head coaches yesterday? A similarity. It's all about connectivity for these guys. It's about building the relationships. How many times when talking to players do we hear, yeah, this locker room's super tight. These coaches, they know us more than just players. That's a theme that seems to be consistent now with the successful teams especially these two. Yeah, and there is that human side to it, connecting on that level. And connects one of the core values that Nick Sirianni has on the board for his team, one of the five core values of his football team. Shotgun on second and one, Hurts. A lot of room there, and he's going to take it. Veers out of bounds, good enough for a first down. Jared Davis made sure it wasn't extra yarded. Sirianni is... 41 years old. Dable is 47 years old. Brian waited a while to finally get that head coaching opportunity, but anyone you talk to associated with the Giants will tell you that Brian Dable made an impression right away. From day one, they knew things were going to be different. He's been around organizations that win and win big. New England, University of Alabama, and had prominent roles with both of them. So he came in understanding what it looked like and what he wanted it to look like, and it was easy for him to get his message across. Pistol formation, Scott, brick wall. Micah McFadden holds him for no gain on the play. And that was also part of our conversation with Dable in terms of approach. He has seen every type of scenario in the final week before the playoffs as an assistant coach, so a good feel for what his team needs and not necessarily what others were quenching and that was the big one right there what does this team need that's what he went with the nfl on cbs is sponsored by wagoneer live a grand dream and by verizon the network you deserve the savings at last 
Yeah, it was all Philadelphia when these two teams played one month ago. Certainly at times this season, the Eagles have looked like the best team in the NFL. They got off to the best start. They were the first team to officially qualify for the playoffs. But the last two weeks without Jalen Hurts is a reminder that it's fragile in this league. Not only that, remember Lane Johnson, their all-star right yep. tackle, has been out. And they are hoping to get him back for the playoffs. It's a torn adductor for Johnson. That pass on the money to A.J. Brown for a first down. Covers 11 yards. And once again, Jalen Hurts. Roughing the passer, number 44. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, it's Nick McLeod. And once again, Jalen Hurts standing in there with the heat bearing down on him. We're going to get it from both sides, top of the screen and bottom. And McLeod with the hit after the ball is gone, properly flagged. But Hurts never affected on the throw. So you got the 11-yard pass play, the 15 yards tacked on after the penalty. Line of scrimmage is now the 21 in New York territory. And they've gone for big shots a couple times on this drive and haven't gotten them. Can they find that shot to the end zone now? Gainwell turns it upfield and rips through for a first down. Eventually brought down by Dane Belton. First charge timeout. Giants. Timeout the call by the Giants. 146 on the clock. That was an 11 yard gain. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. JB, Phil, Nate, Boomer, Coach Cower. Latest NFL scores and highlights. Week 18 in the National Football League. It's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Jalen Hurts in our sit down with him. A very positive attitude. He's obviously been the leader of this team and they follow his lead but he said look I'm a competitor I wanted to get back out there but I truly needed time to heal probably should have come out of the game against Chicago when it happened yeah and you're battling yourself in those moments too raw nasty day really didn't get much done in the passing game normal as normal for him but the competitor in him would not let him come out remember they've got three timeouts so they can still run the ball down here if they choose First and goal, Hurts tries to get away, spun down. Micah McFadden over there defensively for the Giants, and they get to Hurts. Timeout taken. And this is what the Eagles did not want to see, Jalen Hurts taking any hits. But the play was designed for the ball to be out of his hands quickly. But give credit to the Giants secondary for taking away the passing lanes. I think he wanted a slant to Devontae Smith. And when that was covered, couldn't find anyone else. He takes the hit in the pocket. Tamon Fox, the first one to apply the pressure, and then McFadden finishes it off. Noticing you're a little bit of a theme here in, in your calls. Yeah, Fox. Fox. A lot of Fox. A lot of Fox. McFadden starting to show up a lot for the Giants as well. That was a loss of 10 on the play. Back to the 20-yard line, second and goal. Giants have one timeout remaining. And keeping A.J. Brown at the top of the screen. Devontae oh, Smith at the bottom. Hurts darts it underneath catch Devontae Smith tackled down to the nine yard line by Williams and if Darius Williams doesn't make that tackle I think Devontae Smith walks in it's a big open field tackle for Smith Giants use their final timeout we'll be back in 30 seconds right after this Eat like a king who's on a budget. Three tasty options, fries, drink, and nuggets. All for five bucks. Wait, that can't be right. Just confirm that that's the real price. B K, have it your way. Deep sea driving, I see. Something like that. Well, here's something else. With your farmer's policy perk, new car replacement, you can get a new one. That is something else. Get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. One thirty-three on the clock, late second quarter here in Philadelphia. Eagles in front, 13-0 on the Giants. Third and goal. Hurts sacked again at the 22. Jalen Hurts hit by Nick McLeod. It's fourth down. How many times off the edge have we seen number 44 in white already today? He picked up a, a roughing the passer penalty a few plays ago. 
This one was his redemption. Getting to the backfield, putting Jalen Hurts on the deck. McLeod picked up off of waivers, had been with Cincinnati and Buffalo, undrafted free agent out of Notre Dame back in 2021. Look how they forced him into another field goal attempt. Everyone keeps waiting for the knockout punch to come from Philadelphia. You know, the opportunity to try and put these Giants away. Giants not making it easy for them at all. Yeah, look, the game plan going in, go out, win the game, whatever means necessary. But there's got to be a part of Nick Sirianni that thought, all right, yeah. playing backups, build a lead, maybe third quarter, we can start Get making my some guys changes. Out. Yep. Yes. And right now, the Giants have not complied. No, I think at this point in Nick Sirianni's head is he's going to go here on fourth and goal and then head to halftime. He's just worried about going, to get, going ahead and getting the lead, finding a way to win and get the number one seed. Jake Elliott on for a 39-yard attempt. Made a 32-yarder, made a 52-yarder. Lovato snapping, Kern the holder. 39-yarder, he drills it. Eagles in front, 16 to nothing with 45 seconds left. First half. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report, JB and the gang back in New York. Scores, highlights, all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. 16-0 Philadelphia. Elliott kicks it off. Return man is Brightwell over his head out to the 25-yard line. As part of the NFL's Inspire Change initiative to reduce barriers to opportunity and advance social justice, the Eagles named Dr. Ruth Abaya as the inaugural recipient of the team's Changemaker Award. Dr. Abaya works in the emergency department at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, recently presented with a $50,000 grant from the Eagles Social Justice Fund, an additional $10,000 from the Eagles and NFL Foundation, and was also given two tickets to Super Bowl 57 in Glendale. First down for the Giants. Webb works it to the outside. And Webb's going to use his wheels. Ducks out of bounds as he crosses the 30-yard line for New York. Picks up eight yards in the process. Hassan Reddick among those chasing him. Well, Davis Webb certainly a big part of the quarterback room because of his knowledge, because of what he learned under Dable in Buffalo. And the respect level between Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, Davis Webb. Second down and two. Webb hits Brita in stride to pick up four yards and a first down. C.J. Gardner-Johnson over there. And that was a big part of this giant transformation. Daniel Jones picking up the offense, understanding what Brian Dable was teaching, how Dable sees offensive football. And Daniel Jones telling us, hey, he had simple answers to my questions. And we mentioned it earlier, the human side as well. Absolutely, the connection of it. Of, hey, and, and listen, Brian Ooh. Dable said it best. Players respond better when you care what they think. Ooh. When they have an opinion about something, they have some buy-in. Webb, that one nearly intercepted. Edwards upset at himself. The net, the intended target. Webb was dealing with heat from Fletcher Cox. And look out, get into the face of the quarterback. There's Fletcher Cox, all that pregame stretching, paying off. And look at the coverage downfield. T.J. Edwards, who is quietly having one of the better years at middle linebacker of any player in the league. Came into the game with 148 tackles. He will not blow you away with the measurables, with the speed, but his mind processes quickly, and he's always on the spot. And he's outstanding in coverage for this Philadelphia D. 25 seconds left. First half. Webb out of the pocket. Sidearms one, incomplete. Brightwell, the intended target. It's third and ten. And these Giants trying to find a way to move the ball downfield, trying to find a way to put points on the board. It's going to take from, from, where, from where I'm standing and from what I've seen in the first half, some big-time individual plays, some type of a one-on-one -on -one downfield where you make the catch and you shake off the defensive back and go deeper. Normal stuff not working. Philadelphia all over everything right now. 
Can they find a way to make someone miss and turn it into something bigger? Nickel package flags down. Ball start, number 73, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. And once again, it's the rookie Evan Neal, seventh Second. overall pick. Second jump. And the potential is immense for him. Remember, Andrew Thomas, who didn't start today, their left tackle, had a Pro Bowl-worthy year this season, but he had his share of up and down, ups and downs early. They feel like Evan Neal can come along the same way, and they'll have bookend tackles for the next 10 seasons. Third down and 15 here for New York. Webb through the air. Deep shot. Incomplete. Marcus Johnson, former Philadelphia Eagle, with that fly pattern against Darius Slay. It's fourth down. Philadelphia this season, eight Pro Bowlers, including Slay, Hertz, Sanders, Brown, Dickerson, Johnson, Kelsey, Reddick. Cannot wait to see what Pro Bowl looks like now. Three. Figure the reimagined Pro Bowl. The best part, they're not playing a game anymore or a pseudo game. That My ball. humble opinion. Bounces up in the air. The Manning brothers will be heavily involved as well. Touched at the 25 and a half yard line with two seconds on the clock. So, Eagles will have to take the field here. We presume just take a knee and yeah, they soar their way to the locker room. <laughs> well, well stated. And they get the ball to start the second half. So, you know, they don't have to do anything crazy here. 16 to nothing lead. Not really being threatened. Their deep. There's Hassan Reddick, number seven, one of the Pro Bowlers. First team to have four players worth 10 or more sacks in a season. And remember, Fletcher Cox is within three of making it five. <laughs> I mean, it's a long shot, but their this pass is rush is incredible. The first half. End of the first half here in Philadelphia. The Eagles with a 16-0 lead on the Giants trying to lock up the number one seed. Halftime is next after these first half highlights from Verizon and a word from your local station. Want more stats? Just ask Siri. Who leads the league in interceptions? And he hits A.J. Brown. Brown has just set the Philadelphia Eagles single season receiving record. Eagles are threatening here. Boston Scott in. The blast. Scott won't go down. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Getting you ready for second half action here in Philly. The Eagles in front, 16 to nothing on the Giants. A win for Philadelphia, and they will be the one seed in the NFC. Ian Eagle, Charles Davis, Evan Washburn. A couple of schools of thought here if you're Philadelphia. Of course, you're happy with the lead, but there's no doubt that their coaching staff would rather this thing have been over and done with and no questions for the second half. Giants are hanging around here. And they have the opportunities to do that. Too many drives ending in field goals, not in touchdowns. If they do that as they're supposed to with the offensive personnel they have going against a number of backups the Giants are playing, this game could be there. Instead, the dogfight continues into the second half, but I'm real impressed with Philadelphia's defense and their concentration and focus and not let the Giants get anything going. And they try an onside kick to open up this second half. The ball bouncing around, and Philadelphia finally pounces on it. So the Giants have tried a fake punt, and they've now tried an onside kick. See them giving it a shot. Kayvon Wallace, the first eagle to get to it. And it bounces around. Maybe they've even gone out of bounds before the eagles get it. You understand why the Giants are trying it. They have to come up with anything to try and make this thing work. The other part to me, though, is it's playoff football for the, the Giants. Receiving team. Please set the game clock to 1457. 1457, please. And I think for playoff football, you put more things on tape, more things for people to Thank prepare you. for. They think you're going to try certain things. You're just trying to gain an edge anywhere you can. The Kobe Dean on the recovery. The fake earlier was on that field goal attempt where the punter, Jamie Gillen, got blown up. Yeah, I just think that anything you're doing, punts, fakes, any type of fakes with Jamie Gillen, we saw him in Cleveland, got blown up on a fake there against Baltimore here. Just not thinking that's his thing. <laughs> Let him go ahead and punt the football. Be the Scottish hammer. And don't worry about quarterbacking. 
So they're going to take three seconds off the clock after that whole sequence. Brian Dable, no doubt, came in with the mentality of, hey, we're going to have backups in there, but the goal is still to win the game and put these guys in a position to succeed. Davis Webb's surprise announcement that he would be the starting quarterback. The assumption was, oh, okay, they're going backups. Tyrod Taylor is going to see some action. But clearly the mentality from the Giants was, hey, we don't want to mess with any issues potentially with our backup. Yeah. Considering what could happen come postseason. That's full view looking ahead, not just putting him out there in danger in case something happens to Daniel Jones in the playoffs. You would want Tyrod Taylor available. Eagles take over at the 48. That pass knocked down. So once again, Nick McLeod is involved for the Giants. Let's now go downstairs to Evan. Well, and it sounds like Charles Davis was listening in on my conversation with Nick Sirianni because that was exactly his priority list. Red zone efficiency, leaning on the run game, and trying to extend this lead with touchdowns and not field goals. Obviously pleased with what his defense has done. And look, you can sense down here these guys want to blow this game open, but they realize that they're going to have to deal with these Giants for the next two quarters, and that might include these starters playing all four quarters, guys. Yeah, no doubt about it. And again, you could have your best lead plans going in. The game will dictate your decisions. Catch and run, Dallas Goddard. He's got a first down for Philadelphia. 14 yards for the Eagles. And he ran after the catch as if he got the final score of the South Dakota State North Dakota <laughs> State game. He may have. 45-21 is Jack Rabbit to the national champions of the FCS. And Dallas Goddard celebrating it there with a big play. Trying to get things going in the second half for his Eagles. Sanders in there sets up just to the side of Hurts. Swing it to him. He drops it. Miles Sanders had Rodarius Williams over there defensively for the Giants at second and ten. I feel like Miles Sanders recognized what was out there. <laughs> you know, he knew Rodarius Williams was sitting out there as the corner as he approached on the swing pass. And I'm pretty sure one eye found number 25 in white while the other eye was trying to find the football. So the different scenarios here for Philadelphia, pretty simple. You get the win and none of this matters. But you lose, and now some other things could pop up here in Week 18. Meanwhile, the Giants, they will be the sixth seed. Sling it. Devontae Smith. First down, Philly inside the 20. How about the body control there by Devontae Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner out of Alabama. This ball is, should be on the upfield shoulder. It's behind him. How smoothly he catches the ball behind him, turns himself upfield and gets vertical to gain additional yardage. High snap. Hurts still gets rid of it. A.J. Brown spun down. It was Dane Belton who makes the play for the Giants, but Philadelphia set up nicely after the 12-yard pickup. It is first and goal. How about the last four-play sequence? The best playmakers of Philadelphia have touched the ball. Goddard, Miles Sanders on the drop pass, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown. Hurts on a give. Sanders he is tackled immediately for a gain of a yard, yard and a half by Jared Davis. So Davis has bounced around a little bit in recent years. Originally with Detroit, then the Jets, then back to Detroit. Signed off their practice squad. Get another opportunity here in New York in his forte. Tackling people from the middle linebacker position. Second and goal. On the ground. Sanders. Tries to keep those legs churning, but the Giants gang up on him after the gain of two. So it'll be third and goal for Philadelphia. They'll make some personnel changes here with Kenneth Gainwell checking in. So is Cam Jurgens, backup center. Is an eligible receiver. So he's an extra offensive lineman coming into the game. You just heard him announce as an eligible receiver. So a little more beef up front. Nick Sirianni, Shane Steichen trying to crack the code. It's been the Giants' defense. Only gotten into the end zone once so far today. Third and goal against this Wink Martindale coach defense of Big Blue. Shotgun. Fake it. Hurts. Back of the end zone. Juggled and caught. Touchdown, Devontae Smith. The timing ended up being perfect as Hurts waited for the perfect moment. Number 69. 
was illegally downfield. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. So, touchdown is off the board. The pro bowler Landon Dickerson, the guilty party. The play got extended a little bit. And let's see how far he wandered downfield. All right, 69 right there in black. You get one yard, and there he is getting to the goal line. And where was the ball snapped? On the two. So back it up to the seven. Third and goal. Yeah, sometimes when a play like that gets extended, the offensive line makes it downfield just a tad too far. And that's what happened with Dickerson. Hurts. Handles the pressure, flag down, Hurts throws, intercepted in the end zone by Dane Belton of the Giants. Penalty marker down at the 18-yard line. 63, offense, penalties declined, result of the play, touchback. So none of that worked out for Philadelphia. They had a touchdown, that's taken off the board, they're not even going to try a field goal after the pick. Good positioning by Belton, getting in front of Smith for the INT. There's been some obvious frustration here for Philadelphia, not putting this team away. The Giants have the football, trailing 16 to nothing, run by Brightwell, and he picks up two yards on the play, met by James Bradbury. This Giants turnaround, you have to go back to 2016, last time they were in the playoffs, lost to Green Bay in the wild card round. They've been through head coaches, now different GMs, three last place finishes over that stretch as well within the NFC East. Just a completely different vibe surrounding this franchise. Webb throws it on a line and connects with Johnson on the outside. It's a first down for New York. This team certainly appears to me to be set up for future success. They have the right head coach. They have the right general manager. They're going to continue to overhaul the roster. This roster will not be good enough for them next year. The place that they can make the biggest jump to me, within their own division. They've only won one division game this year, yet they're going to the playoffs. For sustained success, they've got to start navigating the NFC East better. On a handoff for Brita. Rumbles inside, cutting it for five. Their GM is Joe Shane, 43 years old, in his first year at the helm, formerly with Buffalo, Miami, and Carolina. He was a wide receiver back in his college days at DePaul University, Division Three, the Tigers. In, in Indiana. Yes. No L, W. P-A-U-W, correct? Correct. P-A-U-W? You move on to the next round in the spelling bee. Thank you. <laughs> well, be a heavy underdog. Second and five, Webb underneath. Had to get rid of it because the pocket was falling apart. Picks up two and a half yards. Check in with Evan. Hey, guys, I'm not the first one to say this, but this year one here in New York does remind me of year one of Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean in Buffalo. They make that playoff run with Tyrod Taylor as quarterback. A lot of ties between those two organizations with Shane and Dable, Buffalo, McDermott, and Bean. We could see a similar kind of progression if things go well. Yeah, Brian Dable has won five Super Bowls as an assistant coach, won a national championship with Alabama. He's done a whole lot of winning during his coaching career. Shotgun on third and three. Webb spins it, and Brita gets lit up by Marcus Epps. It's a loss of two. It's fourth down for New York. And what a nice read by Epps. He and C.J. Gardner-Johnson have formed a nice duo when they're on the field together. Epps handling things closer to the line of scrimmage. Gardner Johnson had been a nickel and a strong safety for much of his career, playing more free safety and roaming the middle of the field now, and has had six interceptions on the year, tied for first in the NFL. So it's Jamie Gillen time once again, his sixth punt of the afternoon. No rush. High, Covey, fair catch, brings it in at the 28-yard line. It's a 37-yard kick. Philly gets the football back. They've got a 16-0 lead on the Giants. 
The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Progressive. The right call to protect your home and car. Expedia. Made to travel. And by Chipotle. For real. The Sports Zone exhibit at the Franklin Institute, one of the oldest centers of science education and development in the United States. Always nice to learn something new. Eagles fans just focused on the one seed right now. They get a win, and that's in stone. They'll have home field advantage. Mom, I promise I'll go to the Institute after they win the, one, the number one seed. I promise. Big lane, Boston Scott. Spilled out as he crosses the 40-yard line, hit by Rodarius Williams after the gain of 12. Let's take a look and see if Sam Malo does what he normally does, which is fold around. But this time, it's just zone blocking. Look at him, and great job of positioning. Jordan Mailata, number 68, the left tackle. One of the great stories in NFL history about a guy who never played before and is turning into a guy who's pushing to be a Pro Bowl left tackle. Shotgun here for Hertz. Well, step and run, sliding down. They're going to mark him down at the 43. That's a gain of three yards. He came in with 747 rushing yards on the season. Leads the NFL in touchdown to interception ratio. Two rushing touchdowns from setting a new NFL record for a quarterback in a single season. Cam Newton's got that mark. And one touchdown away from setting the Eagles' single-season record, currently tied with Randall Cunningham with 36. Bobble, Devontae Smith still bobbling it. He secures it, and he's got a first down. That got a little spicy there for a second. That was almost like he was dribbling through traffic in a basketball game, wasn't it? <laughs> Just finding a way. And then here it comes again. Ball's out again. But look at him staying with it. And at the end, yes, the catch survived the ground. 14-yard completion. Hurts now 196 yards through the air. He's looking for it all. Hurts incomplete. A.J. Brown had two defenders in the area. And I go back to the interception he threw in the red zone, and you just wonder about how much they're pressing a little bit to try and deliver the knockout blow. Because that throw that he made, uncharacteristic, hadn't thrown an interception in the red zone all year long. Not the type of play Jalen Hurts would make. Taking that shot there with A.J. Brown with double coverage. Just feel like there's just a little bit of pressure. Not pressure as much as they're pressing, trying to finish this thing off against the Giants, who have been very stout throughout this ball game, forcing them into more field goals than touchdowns. Obviously, the goal was the last two weeks. Get it done. Don't even worry about Week 18. Didn't happen. Throwing across his body, and it's incomplete. Dane Belton back there in coverage. NFL Today update. Let's go to New York. Seattle needs this win and a Green Bay loss tonight, Bill, but... But Matt Gage going to kick this 38-yard field goal to give the Rams a 16-13 lead over Seattle. Back to Ian Eagle. All right, guys, thanks very much. 16-0 here. Seahawks would be eliminated from playoff contention with a loss to the Rams. We see it every year, don't we, Ian? Those teams that supposedly have nothing to play for, spoiling the dreams of those that do, battling hard all the way through. Rams an example of that right now with an opportunity. Third down and ten. Go to the outside. Catch is made by Gainwell, but it is not enough for a first down. He's going to think about, about it here, I would, I would imagine. Although now I see Rick Lovato, the long snapper, running out, so that thought went out of his head quickly. Sending out the kicker, Jake Elliott. Remember yeah. 642 remaining in the third. Remember how Jake Elliott announced himself to the NFL? 61 yarder against the Giants to beat him when he first hit the scene with the Eagles. And that remains his career long. This is a 54 yard attempt for Elliott now in his sixth year. Originally drafted by Cincinnati back in 2017 in the fifth round. 54 yarder, Elliott. Dead solid, perfect. Elliott's having himself a day. 19-0, Philly. 
Back here at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, the 20th year as the home of the Eagles, opened back in 2003. There have been some great moments in Eagles history. They're trying to tack on one more by securing the number one seed. Gary Brightwell takes a knee. It's coming out to the 25. NFL playoffs are here. It all starts next weekend. 12 teams, six games, three days, one epic weekend. Super Wild Card Weekend presented by Verizon Saturday through Monday. Visit NFL.com slash schedule for the full schedule. And as always, every NFL on CBS game begins with the NFL Today. No ride will be for the entire weekend. You? Yes. You already booked it? Oh, yeah, booked it. Molded on a couch. <laughs> That's done. Done. You got your reservations. <laughs> Pass to Lawrence Cager. He's been the Giants' leading receiver here today, and he's got another 15 yards as James Bradbury ranged over to make the play. AFC playoff picture. So this is all set. Kansas City is the one seed. Buffalo, the two seed. Miami gets in as the seventh seed. It'll be Chargers, Jacksonville, Baltimore at Cincinnati, Miami, Buffalo in the wild card round. Some very intriguing matchups. I mean, we got two divisional matchups right out of the gate in the wild card round. Handoff, Brita. Got through that first contact and accelerates for 13 yards. Kaiser White there defensively for Philadelphia, but the Giants are now in Eagles territory. A nice job by the Giants offensive line, creating that space for Brita to find his way through. We talk about them mixing and matching their offensive line to play today. And they're doing a nice job hanging in there and trying to get, get something done. They've had a tough time moving it underground throughout. That play there, they did a really nice job getting Matt Breida in open space. Bredesen's in there. Matt Pert is in there. We mentioned Evan Neal's name a couple of times. And again, this time it's Brightwell taking the sideline. Brightwell gets hit by Epps. Another strong run for Big Blue. That one, a 23-yard rip. And Gary Brightwell made it happen right from the beginning as he slipped the tackle in the backfield. Good block there by Bredesen on Blankenship 32. And Brightwell using his eyes effectively to continue to traverse downfield and pick up the extra yardage. But he made it, made it happen right in the beginning, slipping the tackle in the backfield. Tyree Phillips also on that offensive line for the Giants. Line of scrimmage is now the 20. We're down to 4.22 to go in the third. Trick play. Nope, Cager's going to try to run with it. And he gets brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Kaiser White. Robert Quinn, 98. Experience. He saw the trick play and took it away. Okay, so watch right here. Okay, watch Quinn. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That felt funny, and he goes and takes the quarterback where Cager was trying to throw it back to Davis Webb. Second down and 12. Webb threw his first NFL pass today. He's looking for his first NFL touchdown. Webb, the timing was there, caught by Johnson. It was that close to being an INT and possibly a pick six. Yeah, the pro bowler Darius Slay, he had it in his sights. Watch number two, he's jumping this. And then the extra move when he came back underneath, Marcus Johnson. If he stayed on the initial path, I think Slay has the play. But if that last whip around move and Webb hanging in there under the pressure and delivering the strike, you see Slay right there. If he just stays on the normal route, he's got the play. But that extra move got him and a beautiful ball by Webb. First and goal for the Giants. Running play, up the gut, Brightwell, very little there. Hargrave, who is a mammoth human being, helps contain Gary Brightwell. And that takes some saying, doesn't it, considering Linval Joseph's out on the field, right? Fletcher Cox, those big offensive linemen for the Giants. But Javon Hargrave is indeed a mammoth human being. This is the number one defense in the NFL, statistically. Eighth in scoring defense. I've had a whale of a year on this side of the ball. 
Second and goal. Play clock down to one. That felt late. Yep. Play of game. Number 12. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. You get a little bit of a cushion. Not that much. No. I think that we talked about it from week one on, Ian. Going back to last year, the playoff game, San Francisco Dallas, there was a lot of leeway with the play clock. And I think the officials and the league tightened down on it without making a big deal of it. They never made an announcement about it. They just told them to tighten it down. And they've been consistent from week one all the way here through week 18, where they only give you, just as you mentioned, a little leeway, not as much as they did before. So back it up to the 13-yard line. We're under two minutes to go on the third. Once again, play clock down to zero. That's back to back. See, that doesn't make sense, though. We have game number 12, offense, five-yard penalty, second half. I get the first one that happens, but you can't come second, off of a play that you've been penalized and be late please. on the second one. There's just no excuse for that. Trying to get it there, but a lot of that is much more how, how, what time did you get to play in? Did you get to the line of scrimmage in time to get set? Look over the defense. On second down, Webb out of the pocket. Pump and throw. He floats it. It is caught. Vanette. And he's tackled at the six-yard line. It's going to be third and goal. The Giants will still have a couple of cracks at it. Down to 122 to go on the third. Fletcher Cox rushed Webb. Look at him with that Chuck Bittner face mask. That's old school right there, isn't it? It looked like something Concrete Charlie would have worn right here. We're at number 60 and Kelly Green. Webb is now 15 of 28, 104 yards. He's trying to get the Giants on the board. Third and goal. Webb in trouble. Gets away. Webb short on that throw. Brandon Graham was the first man applying pressure, then Hargrave, Galladay, the intended target, and it's fourth down. And, and Brian Dable's going to send out the field goal unit. And I, who would have thought that Davis Webb would be the guy to continually elude these defensive linemen trying to chase down the Chicago Bears sack record? I mean, they've gotten one for the game, and that was on a trick play. Do they have a second one? So they got two. So they got two for the ball game. Four was the number coming in. But he continually <laughs> foiling them out in the open field. And Webb has had good command throughout the day. The back-to-back -back delay of games. Yeah. Obviously, that drew the ire of Dable. And a field goal is good from Gano. So, Giants put points on the board. We are late in the third quarter, 19-3. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Consumer Cellular. Ten-time All-Star Mike Trout on hand. Huge Eagles fan. 6'3", 235. Mike linebacker territory. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, when you look at those dimensions, I think the way that he, how solidly built he is, the Penn. aggressiveness he plays with in the outfield, he'd be a Mike linebacker in today's NFL football. Maybe Penn State? I think without question, that'd be linebacker you, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Guy's only won three MVPs, ten all-star yeah. games. I mean, he's a hitter. He's already pretty good at one sport. I mean, we don't need to, <laughs> you don't need to expand assign it. him to a second sport. <laughs> Well, this Philadelphia defense, the numbers now are getting into historic range. Last season, they had 29 sacks. It was second to last in the NFL. They have 70 sacks this season to lead the league. They are two away from tying the NFL record set by the Chicago Bears in 1984. But never did they think that those two sacks today would come off the plays they've gotten them off of. Yeah, they were not traditional sacks. No. Fake field goal, right? And then a trick play with Cager trying to throw it back to Davis Webb. 50 seconds to go on the third. Jalen Hurts remains in there in a 19-3 game. Out of the pistol, Miles Sanders gets the call for two yards. Hit by McFadden. NFL Today update. Let's go to New York.
That second seed for San Fran looking good, Bill. Yeah, San Francisco's pouring it on at Brock Purdy. It's going to hit George Kittle here. It's Brock Purdy's third touchdown pass to the day. George Kittle's second. And it's San Francisco 38, Arizona 13. Ian, Charles, and Evan. Yeah, it's a Brock Party <laughs> right now for the 49ers and maybe even for the Giants, considering yes. they will avoid San Francisco in the wild card round. It would be Minnesota in that three spot. And I do believe they've got confidence about that Minnesota game born from their first meeting. Hurts has to throw it away as the Giants have gotten solid pressure yep. on Jalen Hurts. That time, Ryder Anderson for New York. The rookie out of Indiana. We're seeing what, what what Don Wink Martindale, their defense coordinator, told me coming into that play now. And what he said was, it's a cool opportunity for people to get a chance to show that they belong, prove that they can play at a higher level, let everybody know they have talents and skills that they may not have been seen because they haven't had an opportunity. Today's their day. I expect them to play really hard in this one, and that's what we've seen so far. And they haven't just played hard. In a lot of ways, they've played pretty darn well. Six seconds left in the quarter. Play clock was winding down. Hurts. Velasquez receiver Smith to make a play after the catch. Cannot. Tackled after a gain of three at the 30-yard line by Williams. We head to the fourth. Philadelphia's got the lead, but the Giants not going away. Fourth quarter in Philadelphia. 19-3, the Eagles in front. Last year made the playoffs as a wild card, lost to Tampa Bay 31 to 15. That was the 2-7 matchup in the NFC. Came back with a vengeance this year. 8-0 to start the season, 13-1 with Jalen Hurts starting at quarterback this season. Brett Kern punting. Giants got a little bit of pressure on it. A wobbler to Richie James. He lets it bounce and it takes a Giants roll. Touched at the 41 yard line. That's a 29 yard kick from Kern. We'll come back in 30 seconds after this from Progressive Insurance. Hey, sweetie, I'm not seeing the life jackets. Well, you said you packed them. No, you packed them. No, you packed them. You said I won't forget to pack I the life jackets. I won't forget to pack the life jacket. I, I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to challenge that. Well, you do have one left, so. This What Really Happened replay is brought to you by Progressive. One thing no one would challenge, protecting your home and auto with Progressive. You know, my favorite part was when you said, obviously, I won't forget to bring the life jackets. Davis Webb leading the Giants offense. When we spoke with him last night, he said, quote, I did not think this was possible. He did not anticipate it going this way this week. Called his girlfriend, called his parents. They're in attendance here today. He hands it to Gary Brightwell, cuts it to the outside for five yards, hit by Kaiser White on the play. And look, they've been around the block. They know the deal. Obviously, Davis's dad is a football coach, Father Matt at Frisco Centennial High School in Texas. He was an assistant coach when Webb came through the high school ranks that Product took a head coaching high. job. Yep. And that was the score. Yep, and this this is a really nice opportunity for Webb to get a start in his sixth year. That one's knocked down by Milton Williams. He's got so much knowledge and one day will be a coach. It's basically said that that's where my career will one day go, but a chance to play and maybe extend his playing career. And, and learning to coach while you're doing the playing, Patrick Johnson providing the pressure there. And let's be honest about it. Davis Webb's career is not going the way a normal third-round quarterback goes. Normally a third-round quarterback gets some opportunity somewhere. This is the first time in his career he's throwing a pass in the NFL game. Not normal. Third and five, Brightwell gets tossed down short of the line to game. NFL Today update. Back to New York. It is a division rivalry, Bill. Yeah, Sam Howell, the Washington Commanders on the RPO right here is going to keep it to go from nine yards in to score the touchdown. The Washington Commanders 20, the Dallas Cowboys 6. Back to you guys. I'll tell you what, you saw, that was, you saw that was Sam Howell. That's what he did his last year at North Carolina. Picked up the slack with Javante Williams and Michael Carter gone to the pros as his runners. Giants right now are going to go for it. Timeout taken on fourth and one with 1337 on the clock 
Three teams, three hours, one night. The NCIS, NCIS Hawaii, and NCIS Los Angeles crossover event. It's tomorrow, beginning at 8, 7 Central on CBS. So if you're NCIS, which one do you ask it to be assigned to? Los Angeles, Hawaii, or here in Annapolis? I mean, you're asking me personally? Yeah, yeah, you. Oh, no, no, I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> It's a, I like where you had not even a debate. <laughs> you mean there was a choice? Yeah. <laughs> All I heard was Hawaii from you. <laughs> On fourth down, Webb. Catch made. Cager falls forward and has enough. Gardner Johnson with a tackle. He thought he had him behind the line to gain. He did. He did not have the first down on the initial hit. The first down was gained. Okay, watch. As he turns up field, here comes the first pop. He's not, he doesn't have it, doesn't have it, doesn't have it, has it. Excellent job by Cager, turning around and extending the extra effort to lunge forward and get it when he was wrapped up. Cager, nice job, Cager. five, and he needed every last inch to get there and extend this drive. Trailing 19-3, Webb, sidearm toss underneath, and Brita twirled down. I'm going to give him a gain of four on the play. T.J. Edwards makes the tackle. Came in with 149 of them entering week 18. Down to Evan. Well, guys, we've talked a lot about sort of the cloak and dagger behind having Davis Webb start this game. Talking to folks before the game here on the sideline, it sounds like pretty much the quarterback room and some of the coaches were really early in the week. The only ones that knew the plan, they really kept this behind the scenes. But Davis Webb all week has known this is what he's been waiting for. On a give, it's Brightwell, a stop and go for a first down. Works it across the 30-yard line. Reed Blankenship cuts off the angle eventually. It's a 17-yard gain for New York. Didn't Saquon Barkley tell us that he thought his job, number one, was to encourage Gary Brightwell, Matt Breed, to help them as much as he possibly can? He I don't did. know how much credit he gets for that, but they have, they've responded, especially Brightwell. Another really nice run. They allowed himself to get to the perimeter and get to the sideline and pick up good yardage. New career high for Barkley, one of two pro bowlers on the Giants roster this season, along with stud defensive tackle Dexter Lawrence. Catch made. Cager the spin. Hurdles. And gets thumped. <laughs> Got a first down. Hit by Gardner Johnson on the play. That covers 12 yards. CJ Gardner Johnson shaking his head. No, you're not going to hurdle me. But you gave us the pertinent information, Ian. He picked up the first down. Another nice play. Cager on a good, doing a good job making an extra individual play after the catch to gain the yardage necessary. Seven catches, 63 yards for Cager. Webb is now at a buck 21 through the air. Under 11 minutes to play. And this play whistle dead. It was going to be a handoff All to Brightwell. Start, number 74, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. And that is Matt Pert. So, back it up. Remember when Pert was drafted out of UConn? They were thinking he might be the right tackle with Andrew Thomas being the left tackle. Now, fighting to continue to be a swing tackle on this Giants roster. Torn ACL in 2021. Pert in his third season from UConn. Third round pick. First and 15. Back to the 21-yard line. Shotgun for Webb. He's going to keep it. Webb slides across the 15-yard line. That's where they will mark him down. T.J. Edwards will get credit for another tackle. That's a gain of seven. And that was called. That wasn't just him, you know, being flushed out of the pocket. They emptied out the backfield, tried to spread out the, the defense, and he took advantage of the run inside. Second down and eight, Nick Sirianni. We asked him, what do you love about this team? He said, we'll do whatever we need to do to win. You take away one aspect of what we do, we could do it a different way. We're fast, we're physical, we play for each other. On second down, Webb, that ball got deflected, incomplete. Javon Hargrave there defensively for Philly. He's wondering how he's not going back to the Pro Bowl after he went in 2021. 
11 sacks this year, a lot of pressure, and here he is again, getting back to the quarterback, this time knocking this one, knocking that one away. Second pass he's broken up this season. Ten, ten to go. Third and eight for New York. I'm thinking two plays if I'm the Giants. Again, it's Webb, right up the middle, Webb! Into the end zone, touchdown Giants! Davis Webb with some power in those legs and upper body. And I, and I was thinking two plays for the Giants there. How many opportunities would you get down here? Davis Webb said, forget two, let's go with one. And as you described, look at him Ben Bredesen, the guard. And now he drops his shoulder on Reed Blankenship, the rookie safety at MTSU, already crossed it to the end zone before the ball comes out. Excellent drive. What a capper for Davis Webb as they line up to go for two. First NFL touchdown for Webb. Trying to tack two on the board here and make this a one-score game. Webb. Fake it. Toss it. Incomplete. Gardner Johnson got over to the spot. Marcus Johnson, the intended target, so the Giants will settle for six. Davis Webb hits pay dirt in the NFL. Davis Webb engineers a 10-play, 59-yard drive. He takes it in for a 14-yard touchdown run. And the Giants cut into the Philadelphia lead. It's now 19-9 with 10 minutes and four seconds to go in the fourth. They've put Philadelphia in a position now with 10 minutes to go that their offense needs to answer. Kick from Gano. It's a touchback. So watch, you're going to get motion here, and then that takes the linebacker out. And once that happens, watch the gap that Davis Webb has. He follows the center, Bredesen. And look at him drop the shoulder on Reed Blankenship, the rookie safety. It's a quarterback playing with abandon. He's a third-string quarterback. Didn't expect to play at all. He's not leaving anything out there. He's taking it all with him. Excellent job by Davis Webb. A really nice drive he orchestrated. And these Giants now in striking distance of Philadelphia. Yeah, they erupted in that sweep after the touchdown by Webb. Working from the gun. Hurts. Step. Throw. Too far for A.J. Brown. Incomplete. Coverage from Dane Belton, the rookie from Iowa. They've taken a few shots today. The only deep ball they've hit early in the game where A.J. Brown found the football and Rodarius Williams did not for the Giants and came back and got it. But have not been able to get that deep strike where you catch it and you keep sprinting. Right there, see the hand by Belton. Just a little bit on the bicep of A.J. Brown. But with his play strength, he typically plays through those, that kind of contact. Second and ten. Once again, operating from the gun. Rush coming. Hurts gets rid of it. Connects with Dallas Goddard. First down. That one covers 12 yards. We have an NFL Today update. Back to New York. Russell Wilson trying to finish on a hopeful note. Yeah, I'd say so, JB. How about this third touchdown of the day? He's going to find right now Courtney Sutton in the back of the end zone wide open. Right now it's 31 to 20. Denver over the Los Angeles Chargers. Back to Ian Eagle and Charles Davis. And there will be a new head coach for the Denver Broncos. That remains to be seen. Who they focus in on. Sean Payton's name has come up in conversation. As it will with any opening out there. First down run. There's a big opening for Scott. Didn't go down. He got spun around and never hit the turf. So he got extra yards at the end of the play for 21. So take a look here at all this open space and right in here. And guess what? They're going to utilize it. Get a double team there from, say, Amalu and Kelsey. Driscoll, 63, does a nice job working on the working on the linebacker there. 57, Jared Davis. Everyone is matched up, which means there's nothing but space. And Boston Scott, how about that contact balance there? Stays on his feet to gain the additional few steps. Now it's Gainwell in there. Hurts. Knocked away. He was trying to hit A.J. Brown on the slant flop. All over it for New York. 
One thing you can say about the secondary for the Giants today, they have been aggressive in all aspects. Look how I'm driving on the football right there. And it bounces off A.J. Brown's arm, and Flott almost comes up with it. He's another rookie out of LSU, third-round draft pick, won a national title with the Tigers. Hurts on second and ten. Works that sideline to Devontae Smith. And that's good enough for a first down. I, and I'm just wondering down the stretch here, knowing that they need some points to give them a little bit of a little bit of breathing room here. They haven't gotten much done offensively. If Nick Sirianni is looking at his play sheet and thinking people more than plays, who are my playmakers and how do I get the ball to them right now to try and find a way out into the end zone? That'd be Devontae Smith, 6, A.J. Brown, 11, Miles Sanders, 26, and Dallas Goddard, 88, his primary guys. Sirianni works with Shane Steichen, the offensive coordinator, designing this offense. Give it to Gainwell. Micah McFadden there to make the stop after a six-yard gain for Kenneth Gainwell in his second year in the NFL from Memphis. So we're down to 7.34 and counting left in this fourth quarter. Philadelphia 19, the Giants 9. A win, the number one seed belongs to Philly. Seventh play of the drive for the Eagles. Line of scrimmage is the 25-yard line. Keep it on the ground. Stutter step move. Gainwell gets low. And he's tackled short of the first down. Hit by Jared Davis on the play. Gain of three. It is third down and one. At the 22. The Giants, I load, up on, I load up on the run game here. I don't expect Jalen Hurts to have any type of quarterback run when normally that would be it, even though it looks like they're lining up in that normal sneak formation for themselves. Yeah, they go tight. I'm surprised here. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Push the pile forward for a first down. Now, I know your concerns would be shoulder-related. Shoulder. Yes. For Jalen Hurts. I know that's a staple for them, and they do it as well, if not better than anyone else in the NFL. But I thought today I would come up with something else and take the hits off of my quarterback. I know they feel like a quarterback sneak is not nearly as bad because you're not getting the momentum built up for the hit. I'm just trying to take every hit off of Jalen Hurts as I look towards the playoffs. Hurts has a connection to Brian Dable going back to their Alabama days together. Dable under Nick Saban. Hurts eventually transferring to Oklahoma on a give for Boston Scott he is stood up and driven backwards at the 21 by Micah McFadden there you go 2017 Dable and Hertz Saban listening in to their conversation Devontae Smith also in the picture there Heisman Trophy winner in had, 2020. Had a few players around him, didn't he? Jalen Hurts? Yeah. One or two? Yeah. Or like 40 or 50. <laughs> and they went to Oklahoma and shined there. Guy was all, a guy was player of the year in the SEC and the Big 12. Pretty impressive. Second and 11. That wasn't as clean as they probably thought it would be because the snap was a little bit higher than anticipated. So it's a three-yard pickup. Brings up third down. Clock continues to move. We're down to 4.50 and counting here in regulation. Ten-point lead for the Eagles. Gainwell remains in there. Third down and seven for Philly. On the ground, Gainwell battling, got a first down, inside the 10. Kenneth Gainwell is their two minute back when they run that style of offense, but he was a heavy duty ball carrier at Memphis. 
1,400 yards on the ground before he opted out in 2020 and ended up back, ended up in the NFL. Compact, tough, hard-nosed runner, and he just showed it there. Yeah, brings a lot of quickness. Good receiver as well. And he keeps the clock moving in the favor of the Eagles. Yeah, this drive has taken more than six minutes off the clock. Gainwell, hard cut. Tackled inside the five by Belton. Four-yard pickup. Two guys that don't mind contact met in the Second hole there, charge, didn't they? Giants, the 32nd timeout. What's up? Giants stop the clock with 3.34 to play. Philadelphia knocking on the door here. Giants down to one timeout remaining. It's going to be the 13th play of this drive for Philly. Daniel Jones, of course, the focus is next week, but he said he wanted to get mental reps yeah. here tonight and just visualize how he would handle situations, help out Davis any way that he can. Smart, keeps himself sharp in, 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 in the best way he can without actually physically doing it. Trying to get himself ready for next week's game. Looks like it's likely going yep. to Minnesota. He could have wore sweats. Could have. He, wore he, he actually warmed up, went through everything. Second and goal for Philadelphia. Scott on the backfield, handed to him, and Scott is wrapped up, and that play is whistled down as Jared Davis engulfed him, trying to drive it towards the goal line. So it's third and goal. You mentioned 13 plays, nine third runs so far, and Nick Sirianni, third and seven ran the ball with Gainwell to pick up a key first down. Anything he can do to keep the clock running, playing with a 10-point lead here down the stretch. Well, the Giants have used their final timeout. Eagles will have it at the four on a third and goal. And under normal situations, what would you have to do as a defense? Prepare for potential quarterback run game. If they do it here, congratulations to them. They fooled you. I think they do something else. I don't think you want Jalen Hurts in that, involved in that tonight. Three and a half to play. Third and goal for Philadelphia. Hurts looking to throw out of the pocket. And Hurts will just chuck it out of bounds. Dane Belton had a beat on him. And the Eagles will send out the field goal unit to tack on three points. How about this Giants defense, though? I mean... It seems unlikely they will come out on the positive side in terms of the scoreboard, but they have done everything possible to keep themselves in this game. Look at Nick Sirianni. Can't find a way to find the, find the end zone again after their initial touchdown today. There's Don Wink Martindale, defensive coordinator. He's got to be proud of the guys he's had on the field today. It's a 22-yard attempt. Chip shot for Jake Elliott, and he knocks it through. Philadelphia's got a 22 to 9 lead, a long 15 play, nearly seven minute drive. Back here in Philadelphia, joining you today from 1020 Patterson Avenue, Lincoln Financial Field, the Eagles 22, the Giants 9, 321 to play. So three minutes and change away from the number one seed in the NFC. Kick from Elliott, Brightwell, this is returnable from the seven. Slow down, gets out of there, works the sideline, and then forced out of bounds as he crosses the 45-yard line. Today's game produced by Mark Wolf, directed by Suzanne Smith. Associate Directors Brian Jagoda, Katie Keene. Broadcast Associates Adam Cohen and Megan Gonzalez. Technical Managers of today's game Rick Godwin and Keith Green. Technical Director Terry Rosich. Our Audio Supervisor Ryan Miller. Stats provided by... David Freed and Matt Jenkins, our spotter, Butch Baird. X's and O's, Ben Fennell. Production managers, Taj Lewis, Liz Jark, and the singer himself, Bob Magaha. And we thank each and every one of them. What a fantastic season it's been. And everybody that helps make us look and sound good every Sunday for Charles Davis, for Evan Washburn, and for everybody on our crew. Thank you. Cheese, Igor, on and on.
Hey, hey. Guys are the best. Thank you. Second and ten for the Giants. And it's just an interesting dynamic. Philadelphia is going to win this game. They're going to grab the one seed. You could sense that they are unsatisfied with what's transpired. Fraction. Number seven, defense. Five-yard penalty, second down. And on the flip side, the Giants are going to take a loss. They'll end the season at 9-7-1. and one. Yet, there's a lot of joy on their sideline, what their second-team defense has done against this high-powered Philadelphia offense, what their second-team, third-team offense has done to stay in this game. It didn't have to put other guys at risk, extra plays, and now you go to a playoff game. It will be Minnesota, it appears, right? And they feel confident they can go there and win that game. That will be a trendy pick for an upset in the first round by a lot of people, in my estimation. And Philadelphia... Fought hard for the one seed. Everybody wants it. But to your point, and I think this is where you're going, it almost feels like they'd rather play next week because this just didn't feel right to them. And they've had a brilliant year. They're going to finish up at 14 and 3. Yet, what they wanted to get out of today was a dominant victory, maybe work some of the backups in come third quarter, fourth quarter. And that's just not how the game has transpired. The good thing is we've seen, as we see Webb take another shot downfield, we've seen this Philadelphia team go into the playoffs with uncertainty. Remember when Nick Foles had to take over down the stretch and they weren't playing well and went to the playoffs and people were worried, and they came out with a Super Bowl title. So you can get right in a hurry in this league, and this Philadelphia Eagles team has the capability to do so. No doubt. Uh, there, there's always this perception of cause and effect. The fling by Webb. It is caught, but Matt Breida is met immediately by White. So the idea of the carryover, what you do in week 18, does it carry over into the wild card? If you struggle, does that mean you struggle the next week? If you win week 18 going away, do you then dominate the next week? No, you can come up with examples in every permutation. Exactly. Third down and seven for the Giants. Webb throws it. The underneath catch made by Lawrence Cager. Hit by T.J. Edwards. It is enough for a first down. We hit the two-minute warning here in Philly. 22-9, Eagles. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Northwestern Mutual and by T-Mobile. Coverage beyond the expected. Eagles have been the one seed four times in their history. Last time, 2017. One seed, they won the Super Bowl. Beat New England to win the championship. The officials came together during that break, and they re-spotted the ball. So the Giants have to run a play on fourth and one. They get enough with Davis Webb. He's been very effective on the ground, including a rushing touchdown. And now it's a first down at the 25-yard line. 145 left. Giants have no timeouts remaining. Webb is going to take a shot to the end zone. Oh, what a grab. Kenny Galladay. Touchdown, Giants. Against Darius Slay, his former teammate in Detroit. And a case could be made that Slay had enveloped him and wrapped him up. And Galladay goes up with one arm. Look how Slay's got him wrapped right there. Got a hand on him. No flag. But Galladay one hand, then brings the second one in. And did he land in bounds? And they've determined yes so far. So the Giants very much alive. Kenny Galladay, his first touchdown of the season. Davis Webb's first touchdown through the air in his NFL career. So both feet come down first before the body, so he was inbounds. What a grab by Galladay, who actually got, got through an interference call that was not called. I know that they said, I'm sure that they would tell me they were both pushing on each other, but it looked to me that Slay really had him wrapped up. Look at two. I mean, he's really got him tightened up there. And what a play by Galladay. Both feet down first. And it has been confirmed. Graham Gano on for the extra point.
And the Giants have cut this to six with 138 on the clock. Coming up tonight on CBS. Is it Murder, She Wrote? It feels like it for Eagles and Giants, but it's 60 Minutes and a revealing interview with Prince Harry. Then it's a new East New York and NCIS Los Angeles, followed by an episode of East New York that's tonight on CBS. Well, last week we were in New England and it came down to something similar. It looked like a team had a game wrapped up and it looks like we have to survive an onside kick. New England was able to do so. What's Philadelphia going to do here? What did the Giants have cooked up for them? And what a play by Kenny Galladay. High price free agent expected to transform their passing game and has done anything but that. Most year long and finishes off with the big touchdown grab. Giants have no timeouts remaining. So if Philadelphia recovers, it's over. Philadelphia will use a timeout. They got to look at the alignment here for New York. Graham Gano will do the honors. Gives us a chance to head to New York. NFL Today update. Seattle with a chance to win it. Seattle's Jason Myers from 46 yards. That would eliminate Detroit, but he misses it wide right. Detroit is still alive. The game goes into overtime. First possession goes to Seattle. I am Charles and Evan. All right, coming down to the wire there, of course, with the Packers and Lions coming up. How about the defending Super Bowl champs with no shot whatsoever? Just a brutal season for them record-wise. Still in the battle, still in the fight in Seattle, trying to spoil the Seahawks season. So Gano will attempt to give his team another chance. Bounces that one, quickly recovered by Philadelphia. And it's Reed Blankenship, the rookie. Boy, that played perfectly. That's what they tell you. You charge the ball. If you've got a chance to go get it and recover, you don't wait for the bounce to happen because then you get the second bounce, the short hop, cause you problems. Watch Blankenship. No hesitation. Just goes and gets it and secures it. So Reed Blankenship, rookie out of Middle Tennessee, a high school quarterback, the all-time leading tackler at Middle Tennessee during his career with the recovery and that's all she wrote Giants can't stop the clock the Giants will finish off at 9-7 and 1 the Eagles the number one seed in the NFC 14 and 3 record and they will sit back and wait and see how things unfold in the playoffs And wait, depending on what happens with that Ram Seattle game, we might have some more intrigue tonight. With Detroit might still being a, might still be alive against Green Bay. Take a knee. We'll have to do it one more time. The 180th all-time meeting between these two franchises. Philadelphia will start to celebrate. Maybe didn't go exactly as planned, but the end result is a 14 and three record. Hey, you still get the shirt. You still get the t-shirt and the caps, don't you? You're still the, the, the champions. They'll take it. The Eagles secure the number one seed in the NFC. A week 18 victory over the Giants, 22 to 16. A new franchise record, 14 victories. They'll have home field advantage. The Giants were locked in as the number six seed and New York will now get ready for a matchup in the wild card round. This is the end of the game. 22 to 16 the final here in Philadelphia for Charles Davis for Evan Washburn for our entire crew. This is Ian Eagle. Thank you so much for joining us throughout this season. Enjoy the playoffs as we say goodbye from Philly and we send it to JB. In New York. So the Eagles get it done, clinching home field, first round by.